We're almost at that time again, the presidential election cycle. And if you thought 2016 was bad, just wait for 2020. We will go over the Democrats' top prospects, why they won't be successful against the Donald, and also their overall plan to defeat the Donald in 2020. It's going to be huge. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Ahoy there. Welcome, as always, to Heck Off Kami. Pocahontas, also known as Elizabeth Warren, went ahead and pulled the trigger on the 2020 race by releasing a video and news that she has formed an exploratory committee for 2020. And if you'd like to see my analysis on that video of hers and why it's absolute garbage, I will put a link to it in the description down below. So, 2020. We've all seen how certain Democrats have tried to build their coalition for the candidacy by vehemently opposing virtually everything that Donald Trump has done. I want to talk first about what their strategy is for 2020. It's very clear to me that this is how it's going to play out. So, unless you've been living under a rock for the last three years, you know that the entire narrative of the Democrat Party has been not much else besides Trump is Hitler. Trump is bad. Boo, Trump. That's basically it. And this is evident throughout Warren's video that she released. It's just jam-packed with typical left-wing talking points. But really, all that they have to do, you know, to run on boo, Trump, I mean, that was their strategy during midterms. And if you think that isn't going to be their strategy in 2020, you are mistaken. But here's the thing. That was their strategy during the 2016 election as well. So how could they expect it to work again for them in 2020? Well, they threw everything that they had against him in 2016. I mean, they had entire staffs, just dozens of people digging up virtually anything that they could find about Donald Trump. All of it released strategically correct moments and none of it worked. I mean, throughout his presidency, the same thing. Anything they could find about Trump is released to paint this man as the absolute worst. But uh, they do have one new development and believe me, they are going to use it. Their 2020 slogan will be something along the lines of lock him up. And here's why that could be dangerous. The protocol of the Justice Department dating back to the days of Watergate is that a sitting president cannot be indicted while in office. Once he's out, he could be indicted. The statute of limitations for most federal cases is about five years. What this boils down to effectively is that the Democrats are going to say, hey, everybody, if we can keep Trump from getting reelected, we'll be within the statute of limitations and we can indict him and we can lock him up for all his heinous crimes. Hashtag, it's Mueller time. The question then becomes, well, what would he be indicted for? First of all, the entire Mueller, Mueller investigation, excuse me, is invalid. The Steele dossier was subsidized by the DNC. It was started as an attempt to convince everyone that Trump was Putin's puppet. It's discovered nothing of significance. Media executives have been caught on camera admitting that it's all for ratings. All the indictments that have been made are for BS things like false statements, tax fraud, etc. Nothing of actual substance. And we're supposed to believe that the people, you know, that have lied about what actually happened between Trump and Mueller, uh, even though they're being charged for lying, and I personally feel that, you know, being charged with making false statements sacrifices one's credibility, but that's just my opinion. So the Democrats will have the House majority, and they're really going to milk this, this whole Trump-Russia thing. No one even remembers how or when it started. It's just perceived as truth because it's been repeated ad nauseum. A true witch hunt. The problem is there's literally nothing else, absolutely nothing else that would get the Democrats to turn out like the promise of Trump getting indicted. It doesn't even matter if they have anything on him. They'll just repeat the fact that he can't be indicted unless he loses and people will infer from that that they actually have something on him and will thereby be motivated to try and vote him out of office. But to be replaced by who? Let's get into that. Secretary Clinton. Elizabeth Warren. Not likely. She's all but done despite not having even officially announced her candidacy. And uh, here's why. Pocahontas. That's why. The beautiful thing about the primaries is that we get to watch people from the same party, people that have been supposedly fighting against Trump together, just eat each other. Like in 2008, it was the Hillary supporters that were perpetuating the Obama birth certificate rumors, but now it's racist, I guess. Everyone knows that Warren's claim to Indian heritage was BS, and it was done to advance her own career in both private and public life. Trump attacked this, and Warren fought back and finally got a DNA test done. She was sided with by Democrats when doing this because, frankly, they'll support any measure that goes against Trump. But the idea is that if she can prove that she has native heritage, Trump will look like a racist who's just picking on Indians. Results come back, they're pathetic. Turns out she's actually less Native American than the average white European. That's me. Truly disgusting. Uh, this led her to be criticized rightfully so by the Cherokee Nation, and then as a result, some people on the left attacked her for this. Other than that, there's no way that an Ivy League teacher from a wealthy New England state is going to have a lot of blue-collar appeal, especially when she's campaigning against a man who has increased the quality of life for many blue-collar workers through his policies. And she isn't even that popular among Democrats. She consistently pulls behind Biden and Sanders, even in her own state. Lastly, and this is the least valid criticism I have of her, she just has that look. Like she, she looks like every teacher I've ever had that's given me a hard time. She looks like Hillary Clinton, but younger. And I know it's, it's already very unlikely that she'll be her party's nominee. Uh, so there's no way that she would ever beat Trump. She has no blue collar appeal. She falsified her racial makeup for personal gain. She's not good. 
she's basically, like I said, Clinton, except not Clinton. Joe Biden, former vice president, of course, during the Obama administration, and absolute besties with Obama, too. I hate that so much. The Obama presidency was rooted so deeply in celebrity worship. The whole, OMG, Obama and Biden are absolute goals. It's just so cringeworthy. But anyways, Biden is pretty popular in the polls for 2020. And I could see him having a much stronger appeal than Warren or even others on the list. Biden actually has somewhat of an appeal to blue-collar workers. And the reason that I keep bringing up the blue-collar workers is because these are the Rust Belt states that flipped for Trump in 2016. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, etc. And the funny thing about Biden's blue collar appeal is that it literally stems from two things. Firstly, the fact that he talks with a street like demeanor. He talks like one of the guys. Secondly, growing up, his family wasn't as well off as others. That's basically it. No one could match Trump on the debate stages. No one could control the media like he could. But if there's anyone that could maybe, you know, be in the same league, it would be Joe Biden. Not to say he'd do it as well or, you know, be successful, but he could certainly do it any better than any of the more formal politicians that are also flirting with the idea of a 2020 campaign. And of course, Michael Avenatti would have been the most entertaining, but he unfortunately has announced that he won't be running in 2020 despite previously talking about it. I heard maybe you are interested. Is that true? Any truth well, I'm, to that? I'm seriously considering it. Joe Biden would easily have Barack Obama on the campaign trail for him. Hillary and Bill would have to take a leave of, leave of absence from their book tours for him. And in theory, it should go well. But here's the thing. Joe Biden is a creepy old man. If Joe Biden is the nominee, the Democrats will not be able to make any mention of how Trump treats women. Because if they dare mention that Trump has allegedly had affairs with adult women, Donald Trump will just fire back with hours of footage of Joe Biden acting very strange around very young girls, making very strange comments, giving off very unsettling vibes. Take a look. It's a moment of real joy. Joe Biden will be 79 years old in 2021. When Trump was sworn in, he was 70 and he was the oldest. Joe Biden will be almost a decade older. To make age an issue of the campaign isn't discrimination. It's just an acknowledgement of the fact that perhaps someone who has exceeded the average male life expectancy in the USA shouldn't be tasked with the most difficult and stressful job. And also, there's tons of other footage of Joe Biden proving himself to be less than stellar from threatening to shoot Obama and then stating that he was impressed that Obama was so articulate and clean despite being black. If you think that the Trump campaign will ignore that, you're crazy. And the beautiful thing is, since they've already used every weapon against Trump, they'll have nothing new to present except, hey, we could get him indicted maybe, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out for them. Bernie Sanders. This is the election that we should have had in 2016, had the DNC not colluded with the Clinton campaign as evidenced by the WikiLeaks emails. Uh, in 2021, Bernie Sanders will be at about the same age as Joe Biden, so all previous criticism of that applies here as well. The thing here, though, is that Bernie is a socialist, and a lot of traditional Democrats are turned off by that. A lot of traditional Democrats are turned off by the current Democrat party, uh, but you get the point. And there's been a talk about what this would do with regards to dividing the party. A lot of his support in 2016 was from the grassroots progressives and young people that, you know, don't know how unfailingly catastrophic socialism is, and young people also tend not to turn out too much. So I don't think he'll win the primaries. I think he's less likely to get it than Pocahontas, and the reason for that is because I think that a lot of his support was, you know, support as an alternative to Hillary instead of just support, and um, people that wanted a more liberal candidate than she was. And, you know, if he does win the primaries, he'll never be able to successfully debate in favor of more regulations and taxes against a man that has made the country more prosperous by reducing exactly those. So sorry, kiddo, Sanders 2020 isn't happening. Uh, I'm going to be pretty bummed if it does, and then people take that clip and put it into one of those victory compilations. But I really don't think it will, so that's okay. Spartacus! I doubt it. Pretty simply put, he's not likable. Tried to make a name for himself by going against Trump and Kavanaugh, and it was really not successful, but okay. And he's also very emotional, and that turns a lot of people off, especially men watching him cry and complain on live TV. No one really knows who he is at all, and, and didn't until the Kavanaugh hearings. He has a reputation for sexually assaulting women, so, you know, there goes that attack against Trump. There just isn't a chance. Kamala Harris... Uh, she was pulled third behind Biden and Sanders, new senator from California, relatively young, or at least looks young, attractive black woman. And my opinion, one of the two candidates that will be the nominee uh, in 2020. I'll release a more specific prediction once everything actually gets moving. But right now, it is either going to be Kamala Harris or Joe Biden. The problem now is that she, since she's so new, something like 53% of people have no idea who she is, which compels me to think Biden will have an advantage over her. But she could potentially have a broader appeal than Biden because she's a female minority and we know how much they love identity politics on that side of the aisle. She's intelligent. She's fought against Trump consistently. She's fought against, you know, the supposed racism of the criminal justice system, but a huge advocate for criminal justice reform. She was the attorney general of California and San Francisco. She definitely has a strong legal background and that could definitely be used to continue the, you know, to make the criminal case against Donald Trump. So we'll see how that plays out too. Beto, the failed congressional candidate from Texas. 
he was pulling the lowest, right about 4% out of all these people. And I think the national appeal came from the idea that if he won, there would be no more Senator Ted Cruz, which of course would make the left really happy since they despise Ted Cruz. The idea here is that, look, he almost won in a red state. He has a very good political appeal. He's young, he's charismatic, he looks good on camera. The Silicon Valley writers can't wait to fetishize him like they do Justin Trudeau. Uh, he's very likable, but that's about it. The extent of his experience is the El Paso City Council and the House of Representatives for a few terms, during which nothing particularly groundbreaking was accomplished for him. Uh, but lastly, my absolute favorite, Hillary Rodham Clinton. There are rumors that she's going to run again in 2020. Do it. Third time's the charm. Please, God, Hillary, run in 2020. Hillary 2020 is a lot like having a snow day on a Monday, I've decided, because you know the weekend is coming and you've enjoyed it a lot. And you know, it doesn't last forever. And then on Sunday night, you hear that there's a snowstorm coming and you think, oh boy, this could be it. But you're a good little student. So you act as if you'll have school tomorrow. You tell yourself, there's no way that you could get another whole day off. Why? You've just had two. You couldn't possibly get a third. And then the next morning, your mom wakes you up with the news. The snowstorm came and you get to stay home and you were just so excited. All of your dreams came true and you get to enjoy it once more. You're in total euphoria. That is what Hillary 2020 is to me. She doesn't stand a chance, but I pray that she tries. Of course, are going to be candidates that declare themselves to be in the race that have not been mentioned here but as of now this is how i see things playing out and i'm pretty excited to be honest let the stumping begin well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's absolutely She doesn't right. like Mr. Putin Trump. because Putin Mr. has outsmarted her at every Mr. step Trump. of the way. I, I, Excuse I, me. She's been proven to be a liar on so many different ways. This is just another lie. Excuse me. My turn. Such a Security nasty trust woman. Fund. He held a number.